once you realize that you're going to go through tribulation, and once you accept that, and you continue with Christ, you don't you don't fall away. According to John six six six, read John chapter six verse sixty six. As soon as the preaching got really hard, that's when they walked away. And the same will happen during these end times. Once the pure truth really comes on the scene, that's when the fall. That's when people say, "I can't follow Christ no more." But I believe in this end time. They're even going to twist it. They're going to say, "Well, we're following our version of Christ." And we believe Christ loves us and He's going to have mercy on us because He loves us so much. It's just going to be a lie. Okay? But read John chapter 6, verse 66. John 6, 6, 6. After Jesus' words got a little too hot, that's when a lot of people left Him. And once the ministry in the church gets a little too hot, that's when it's going to happen. The majority of it. It's already being prepared. The churches have been conditioned. God's body has been conditioned to fall away. It's already happened. And it's sad. But if you desire the truth in the Bible, you'll get it. If you desire lies and hypocrisy, you'll get that. People get what they want. They get what they've asked for. Okay? And there will be some who repent. And I praise God for that. But that has to do with their heart. Because these people really want the truth and they've been caught up in lies and deceit. But the pre-tribulation rapture is a lie. That's not how it's going to work. There is no pre-tribulation rapture. There's only one time that Jesus comes back and it's at the end. Right before the vile judgments are poured out. And he comes in, in clouds. And he'll rapture the church then. And that will be at the very end of tribulation. He'll come back to earth. It'll take him about 45 days to get here on the clouds. He'll be seen, in, in, you know, when Jesus appears on the clouds, the sun and the moon have been darkened and the stars have already fallen. So the only thing in the sky is going to be Jesus Christ coming on the clouds with the, the church, okay? Because he's going to rapture them at that time. And then they're going to come back, uh, according to my belief, the martyred saints during tribulation will come back with Jesus. And they're going to be coming on the clouds. During that time, the vile judgments will be poured out on the earth. And it'll take 45 days. For that 45 days... You'll literally go outside and you'll see if you're unsaved, if you're going to hell, because the, the righteous have already been taken from the earth. But you'll go outside and you'll see Jesus Christ coming back on the clouds for 45 days straight while the vile judgments are being poured out. And since there's no sun and moon at that time, okay, and the stars have already fallen, the, the moon turns into blood, but it, it, no light from the sun and the moon the stars. The only light in the sky will be Jesus Christ coming back on the clouds. But coincidentally, it'll be brighter than the sun, possibly. So the earth will still be lit up. Um, you know, that's basically the, the rapture coming before us. Not, the church is going to see the Antichrist, is, is going to be persecuted by the Antichrist. And um, it's God's will. And I'm not going to preach about it. I, I have sermons about it. I'm not going to preach it because I've done writing about it. But... A church that believes that we're going through the, the we're not going to go through the tribulation won't hear one word contrary to that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the falling away is going to happen, and when it does, Christ will actually have a church he can minister to. And although I don't want the persecution that comes with that, I don't. I'm looking forward to that time because then I'll actually be useful because I'll ha have something to do. I'll have people to minister to, you know, not a bunch of people who want to believe in lies and deception. So, as long as Christ's church is in the condition it is, people like me, they don't have much to say because nobody wants to hear the truth. They all want to hear the lies. You know, and the Bible's full of scriptures about in the last days, uh, you know, that many will fall away from the faith, giving uh, uh, heed to doctrines of devils and uh, seducing spirits, and, and they'll, they'll heap up for themselves teachers because they have itching ears, and they'll heap up these teachers because those are the teachers they want to hear. They want to hear, you know, that you can be rich and wealthy and you can be successful and, you know, you're going to have everything you want and it's all about you and it's all about you having a lot of self and it's all about you being the leader and it's all about you being number one. When Christ preaches the contrary, he says, die to self. He says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. So the world want, wants that ministering, so they're getting it. But what you're doing is you're, you're sabotaging your soul. You're sabotaging it. Because if, if you're in a stupor for so long, 
even if you repent, that's good. But now, you're, even though you repent, and that's good, you've been in super so long, you haven't become who God wants you to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're going to be pulled from the fire, and that's it. So, the false teaching has indoctrinated the people and rendered them useless. Useless. And so, now Christ really doesn't have a church that's functioning. And so, it's in shambles. But in the end, he's going to have everything the way it needs to be. But it's going to have to endure the persecution in order to get there. It has to. That's the way it works. Okay? But basically, right now, all the, all the doctrines... They're, they're so evil and wicked, and nobody wants to hear the contrary. That's why I said I can't preach about um, uh, the, the pre-tribulation rapture lie and the sermons that I have to the contrary, and God's will in the end times during the tribulation and even before it. I can't preach it. Because everybody says, no, there's a pre-tribulation rapture. I won't be here. Bye. See you later. No. You're going to be here. So that's just the way it's going to work. And, you know, I, I thought about talking about the Antichrist a little bit and talking about the falling away. And, um, you know, there's a lot of... I don't... I, I believe that as Christians we have to minister according to God's heart. And not everything is edifying. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of questions out there that never need to be answered. I don't care who the Antichrist is. I don't care if he's eight feet tall or if he's a woman. I don't care. It, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I, I, I know the Bible says, you know, he who has wisdom, calculate the number, of, and, and we'll get there, we'll get there, but I don't care about that stuff. It's not edifying for God's church. I want Christ's church edified, so I only try to preach and focus, and that's why you'll see a lot of my videos, they're kind of boring topics, but nevertheless, they're boring topics that matter a lot to Christ, okay? And I'm sorry that they're boring. But if something matters to Christ, and if you're a Christian, then it's no longer boring. It's your heart's desire. I love making those videos. I love talking about the delusions and, and, and everything that I talked about in my previous video, sanctification and uh, David's mighty men. I love talking about those things because that's God's heart for His church. And yeah, it can get tedious and boring. But if that's Christ's will, then that's a blessing. That's a good thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and if that's what Christ wants, then that's what we have to do. And we should be happy about that. And I know a lot of people spend their time, who is the Antichrist, and all this, and all this, and all And yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting to think about, but is that really edifying? If we figure out who the Antichrist is, and what he looks like, and what country he comes from, is that edifying God's church? No. We have to edify God's church. That's number one. Number one. And I'll, I'll put two out there. That's how important it is. We have to edify God's church. That's all it's about. And let the Antichrist be whoever he is. The false prophet too, and, and the whole system. Let it be what it is. Who cares? We're supposed to be separate from the world. We're supposed to come out of the world. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. We're not supposed to think like the world. So we need to edify God's church. And we need to have the right focuses. So I put falling away here because I believe it's, it's going to happen. And I was going to talk about the Antichrist, but I'm not going to talk about it because... It's not really edifying. It's not going to strengthen the Church of Christ. And I, I try to focus all my teachings on what's going to strengthen Christ's Church. Um, you know, I, I just pray that you receive this. The chastening that must occur in your life in order for you to be a vessel of honor that can minister according to Christ's heart towards His people is it's not... It, it, it's, it's the most essential thing, period. It's... You have to do it. It's like making a, a, a sandwich without bread. You can't do it. A sandwich has bread. That's the way it works. If you want to be Christ's minister or minister to Christ's church, you have to endure chastening. And if you, let me tell you something. This is coming from a guy who's been walking and abiding in Jesus for 16 years. And I've been under heavy chastening for around 8 years. Heavy chastening of God the Father. All it is is chastening. Morning, noon, and night. God chastens you, and then He chastens you some more, and then He tells you to do soul searching, and He tells you to pray, then He chastens you some more, He allows you to be disciplined, He allows you to be humbled, and He chastens you some more. That's the process. 
when David was being chased of King Saul? Go read that time. Go read that period in his life. All he was was broken down. Systematically, he was broken down. He was broken down. And this guy got to the point where he was going to kill uh, Nabal. You, you know, he married that woman, Abigail. And David was going to kill her husband and everybody that pertained to him. You know what kind of horrible sin that would have been for David to do that? And he was so tested out there in the wilderness that, that his dross came to the surface. He's like, I'm going to go kill that guy and everybody around him. And then Abigail had to come out and give David, and, and David said, you know, uh, I, I respect your person. You know, he basically said, uh, I found, you found favor in my sight, and I'm receiving your person. I receive your person. Because God didn't want David to sin like that, but he was under such enormous pressure because of the process God was allowing him that there were many times where he almost sinned. I mean, he went to the land of the Philistines, and he wiped out a whole town. And then he lied to the king of the Philistines, said, no, that wasn't your people. Okay? And don't think it's a coincidence that later on, when David wanted to build God's temple, what did God say to David? Your hands have shed much blood. You cannot build my temple. Whoever builds my temple will be a man of peace. Okay? David's hands shed much blood before the slaughter over in the land of the Philistines. Okay? Where he slaughtered those people. Okay? But I believe that David going into the land of the Philistines to avoid King Saul and slaughtering those people is the number one reason why he couldn't build that temple. And also Uriah the Hittite. Those two reasons. Okay? So don't be deceived. When God has you in this chasing place, that's where the most sin comes out of you. That's where you're going to disqualify yourself. And, and that's when you're going to have a lot of problems and God's really going to show you you. But because you're in this process, he'll send those Abigails to, to, to minister to you and to help you. But that's the process. And this is what is God's will for the church and for the ministers. You have to be chastened. You have to go through these processes. Throw your degree away. Throw everything else away. Receive God's chastening. That is what makes you into the man that Christ wants you to be so he can use you to minister. David went into the wilderness for between 7 to 14 years and God made a king in that wilderness. He tempted him. He buffeted him. He, he questioned him. He made David do intense soul searching. That's where he wrote the Psalms. He was on his knees crying out to God. And that's where God did a serious work in David. David was the greatest king Israel ever knew. Yeah, he had some sin. He sinned against Uriah the Hittite, or against God by killing Uriah the Hittite. He sinned. But nevertheless, because of that process, David was was highly esteemed in God's eyes. You want to be highly esteemed in God's eyes? You want Christ to use you to minister to His church? You want Christ to use you? Receive God's chastening. And allow that process in your life, which is without a doubt a process. I've been in it for I've been in it for sixteen years, but more specifically eight years. Because it took me a long time just to get in a position where God can 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 take me that deep in the wilderness. It took a long time just to get my heart and my head right. And then the real fire came. Okay? So it's a real process. I've been in it for eight years. And trust me, it's the hardest work you'll ever do on this planet. It's the hardest thing that I've ever done, period. And and he, he keeps disciplining you and, and showing you things and, and asking you to give up more and asking you to die to self. And it's ongoing. It never stops. And, and you really have to understand that this is God's will for the believer, your sanctification. It's sanctification. God chasing you is the number one ingredient, ingredient to your sanctification. You want to be sanctified? You need God's chastening. It has to be everything.